Here's Brody Brazil. You know, the A's and Kansas City will always share a connection. That's because it was one of the stops for the baseball team as they ventured out west, originating in Philadelphia in the early 1900s, eventually moving to Kansas City before eventually landing where they've been now for 50 plus years here in Oakland. But the A's and Royals also have some similarities, just the way they operate, how much they spend as a business, and currently their stadium situation playing in an aging venue, and now both teams searching for something brand new. So we'll address the similarities here in the situations first, because there are some differences. Here's the Royals situation. A couple days ago, they just came out and officially said they will explore downtown ballpark options in Kansas City. They'll want to move away from Kauffman Stadium, which they have declared essentially too old, but most specifically too difficult to maintain and improve Kauffman Stadium 49 years old as I make this video. But it's the same Kauffman Stadium. Yeah, it is 49 years old, but it it had a pretty major overhaul back in the late 2000s. It finished by 2010 for the cost of $250 million. And they did this as part of upgrading and renovating the stadium to get it ready for the 2012 All-Star Game. So to say that it's the same Kauffman Stadium from the 70s, it's it's not exactly. It has been dramatically improved. I don't know that you can say that about the Coliseum, but I digress. Changes were made there in the 90s, but that was to make it more of a multi-purpose venue. Kauffman Stadium has never been home to Kansas City's football team. So right now, the Royals are envisioning a $2 billion ballpark neighborhood project in downtown Kansas City. Where have you heard that before? Yeah, it sounds very similar to what the A's are trying to do. And look, here come a couple renderings. I've seen two of them officially from the Royals, and yeah, they do look beautiful. It's not just that blue, that color blue, that royal blue, which I I really like. It's, It's, to me, is equal to the Kelly Green. I really like... Kansas City's blue. I've always liked it. But anyway, the renderings look amazing, as you might suspect. Downtown Kansas City, if like if that piece of land is available, I guess that's why they're making up this rendering. I'm not specific on the locations. And guess what? The team is not even specific on the locations yet. Uh, because that's the other part of this. While they're advancing, while they're declaring this, while they're making a splash, we're going to get a new stadium. Well, hang on just a second, because there's more to the Royal situation. They don't have a site yet. They have several leading locations, as the team owner said in a a statement email to the fan base. So that's where they are in the process. They're still picking out the ultimate site to work on, negotiate for, get an environmental impact report for. That's where they're at very early on in this process. They're also saying that if this project goes through, it would be the largest public-private development in Kansas City history. Which also leads me to believe when the when you say it like that and I'm I'm not specific and I'm not certain on the specifics here, are we talking about a public and privately financed ballpark or project or is the public paying for some of this? I don't know. It leads me to when it's stated like that, it leads me to believe that there is some some public investment in this. But the Royals, kind of like what the A's did in 2018, 19, 20, they said they're going to go out on a listening tour. They're going to talk with the public, figure out what Kansas City residents and uh, you know people of the region, what they want most from their team with a ballpark and a new project, just like the A's did for a handful of years. And they say they will begin earnest discussion with local state and federal officials. I say local and state and federal officials. So they're saying we're going to start tying ourselves into politics now so we can get this process and project moving. Boy, that sounds very familiar. And it leads me to a tweet that somebody randomly sent me. Uh, Martin, Martin, I'm not sure of the pronunciation, but I'll say it both ways and hopefully get one of them right for you. Uh, Said this the other day. So Tampa's getting close to a new stadium. First off, Are they? Or are you just going on what Rob Manfred said a couple weeks ago, that he was optimistic about their direction? I don't think Tampa is close 
to getting a new stadium. And then Kansas City just announced a new stadium. Well, wait a second. They announced their initial intentions here. They didn't announce, sign, sealed, delivered, we're putting a shovel in the ground tomorrow. A's still have nothing. Do you think at this point it's just time to pull the cord and announce Las Vegas? Oakland seems a bit busy with other problems. That's really pessimistic right there, isn't it? That's, uh, and there's a few factual parts of this I can't fully agree with. Anyway, it, it, it leads me to bringing you back to the A's situation. This is night and day where the A's are at compared to what the Royals have just said. The A's, remember when they chose Howard Terminal? Now, this is after the Laney site. This is after a Cisco Field site, a downtown San Jose conversation. Like, the A's officially stuck on Howard Terminal four years ago. Almost four years ago as I record this video. November 28th, 2018. That's when they said, we are officially putting all of our efforts into this, <clears throat> into this project. They've got the EIR certified for the project. The lawsuits against the EIR. Those have run their course. They are all nearly defeated. I believe there's only one left of a major four that were presented. The team years ago entered in an exclusive negotiating agreement with the Port of Oakland to acquire this land. They also won the battle for port priority designation of Howard Terminal to be removed so that a project like this could be, could be a reality. So all they're waiting on right now, the biggest you know, bottleneck at this point is a development agreement between the A's and the city of Oakland, and also to figure out as part of that how off-site infrastructure is going to be funded. Oakland has said, and, they, and there's already a plan for it, they're just waiting on the process of securing state and federal grants for it. So do you see how this is a little bit different than the Kansas City situation? Talking about something, throwing out a few renderings, this is action. And I'm, to be clear, all of this still doesn't guarantee you that that shovels will be in the ground like tomorrow, next week, or next year, or two years from now. But this is progress. Kansas City at this point is all conversation. I mean, the A's, yeah, there's differences here. Kauffman Stadium was renovated by 2010. The A's five years before that, about, was it 2004, 5, 6? They began their stadium search that long ago. I'll go back to Kauffman Stadium. It's not as urgent for the Royals to leave like they want to. They see a better opportunity in downtown. But Kauffman Stadium was just redone. And there's no, my next point here, there's no threat of the Royals relocating yet if Kauffman Stadium isn't replaced. The A's are much farther along in this process than the Royals are. And I'm not patting anybody on the back here. I'm just saying to avoid any confusion, like there are some similarities, which... I will end this video with there's some important similarities that you should take note of, but there's also a lot of differences here. And yeah, the Royals, I, I think, are asking for, for public money. They have no idea how they're going to do this yet. This, these are initial conversations, but when you call it a public-private project, leads me to believe that. Now, that's, that's one thing the A's have already said, $1 billion stadium privately financed. Never any question about that. So, that established, let's get to the similarities. I think a lot of people will understand these are two teams, ballparks of similar eras, both being replaced. And I'm talking about ballparks with huge parking lots surrounding them, ballparks in the suburbs, teams that are trying to get to their downtown locations because that's going to be way more beneficial for everybody. And also, my third point here, a spot that can promise a lot more jobs, a lot more economic output, and new tax revenues for, I believe it's Jackson County in Kansas City, and also obviously Alameda County and Oakland for the A's. And these are two franchises that are just looking for rejuvenation and new life. They're not... They're not the biggest spenders in terms of their, their payrolls and their baseball teams, but they've had success over the years. They've got good fan bases. They're not in the biggest markets, so to speak. And I know you could tie in Oakland with the rest of the Bay Area, but it's a two-team market here in Northern California. So these are, these are two of the smaller type teams looking for new life, looking for new opportunity. And that's why 
when anybody would say, well, why don't the A's just stay at the Coliseum? Well, why don't the Royals just fix up Kauffman Stadium? Or there's plenty of land between the baseball stadium and the football stadium, which, by the way, are in the same complex in Kansas City. Build a new stadium between those two. Why don't you do that? Oh, because it doesn't make sense for you either. Oh, so I think the Coliseum fixing it up conversation has way past us, but I just want to show you one more example of another team, similar situation, and they're not even thinking twice about what they're going to do. So that sums it up. The A's and Royals linked in a lot of different ways. A's in Kansas City have the backstory, but right now it's a stadium situation that in some ways is similar, but in a lot of ways, as of right now, is very different.